In Buffalo, New York, one family has created a refuge for neighborhood children and youth, trying to escape the violence and pain of inner city life. For the past 10 years, Dina and Ray Chizinski have sacrificed enormous amounts of resources and time to provide a fun, safe, and loving environment that's as good for the body as it is for the soul. Central to their efforts are classes, where youth develop the tools to attack the day-to-day -day problems they're confronted with. Helpfulness. Hey, Is your mom home? Yeah! Okay, can I talk to her? The Chizinskis live in a community that suffers the devastating effects of poverty, racial polarity, and broken families. Years ago, the Chizinskis considered moving, but at the time, it was impossible. I said, we can't, we're not moving out of the neighborhood. It's, it's not within our means to move out of the neighborhood and get a different house. I says, if you want to change, you're going to have to make the change, I says, in the, in the neighborhood. My father told us, if you don't like the way it is, you got to change it. You can't just sit back and watch it. So we had to figure out a way to change it. And then my mom, she started praying and praying. She's like, we're not going to move. What are we going to do? So she's praying and praying, how am I going to live in this world? The next day I come home and there's 30 kids in my living room having a discussion about the struggles on, on, uh, they're having with life. Dina was pursuing an idea that she and Ray had dreamed up back when they were teenagers. They began working to create a safe haven for young people in distress. I know for me that I don't have the challenges that maybe some other people have with relating to them um, because I have s similarities. I've played out a lot of the rage, you know, in self-destructive behaviors. So, um, you know, I listen to kids that cry. Damian Martinez is one of the youth who has been living with the Chizinskis off and on over the past year. She knows what it's like, you know. She has been there, done that, so she really knows that, you know, she proves to you that you can actually become somebody. You don't have to become negative like your environment. You, you really could become somebody. A lot of these kids are facing a lot of, um, a lot of real issues um, at home and whether it has to do with physical abuse or sexual abuse or it has to do with um, a lot of alcoholism, a lot of racism. Dozens of neighborhood kids have attended classes that focus on values and learning how to make choices that peacefully resolve problems rather than having to resort to violence and conflict. Sometimes I would, I would do a lot of work with the kids and there's a lot of sacrifice, you know, for myself and my family that comes into that. And so I really was going through a lot of turmoil with wondering if, is the sacrifice worth it? Does it really make a difference? You know, what direction should I be going in? And, and I um, really cried and cried and, and really struggled with whether I should stay here and whether I should be doing this. We got this pool about six, seven years ago. And it was at a point in our life when we paid our mortgage off and we thought about maybe, well, should we move, go to a better area because we live in a um, very low income um, area. We made the decision that, that we wanted to stay here. And uh, so we, we decided to, instead of moving, to, uh, to take, take some money that we had and to put it into getting this pool and uh, that it would be a way of, of serving the community. Kids that came here and like they were like, oh, all racial slurs coming out of their mouth, every other word, and like just cursing every, like, and their whole entire attitude, like they're same, still the same person, they just had this in them all along and all of a sudden you see it come out and all this other like stuff that they learned from the outside world or their family or whatever, it's just gone. And then you see them, they're shining and they're bright and it's like, wow. And it, and it was wonderful to see that, but at the same time, our whole house was like completely overtaken. At some point, you're going to want to look over the virtues. And I forgot to bring the poster out, but everyone has one of these in your packet, okay? When you respect oh. other people's property, they are more likely to respect yours. When you treat yourself with respect, others respect you too. Increasing popularity led them to purchase the abandoned house next door. Now the Chizinskis have two houses for meetings and transient youth. Have I in heaven but thee? What I know about the program, I learned from my children. When they would come down and visit and come back home, they always talked about Dina and what she, they learned. I'm like, what is a Baha? That's, is it, I'm pronouncing it right, Baha? And I'm like, what is it? 
I don't know. You know, I never heard of it. It's like people, when they never hear of something, they have a perspective of it, and it don't even be what you think it is. And that's what it was, why I came for myself to find out. I want to do something that's good for the family, you know, to keep us all together in one knit happy home. And I think wherever you live, you can make an enormous impact on, on the community around you. Um, and I think about that ripple effect, you know, like if you throw a, a pebble into a pond and the, the ripples that stem from that and, and all of the people in the community and around you that, um, that really are affected. The Chizinskis have taken the family concept and broadened it to include the entire neighborhood. All the children of this neighborhood are Dina and Ray's children, regardless of their background. They have also provided an example of what a family is and what a family can do and how people through personal, personal initiative and through the initiative of the entire family can make a difference in the entire community.